The Magical Journeys of Engelbert Duck Episode 1 Hello, I'm Sir Engelbert Duck by Russell Keith When Arthur and his younger sister Jenny woke up that morning, they were excited about going to the zoo, but had no idea how special today would be. After washing and dressing in a rush, they hurried to the kitchen for breakfast with Mommy and Daddy. With a good morning to their parents, they gave each other a big hug and kiss. Just then, Arthur looked out the window. It was raining. Jenny asked her mommy if they could still go to the zoo, but mommy said it was raining too hard. What are we going to do today then? Jenny asked, frowning. First I'm going to make you a yummy breakfast, mommy answered. Then after daddy goes to work, you and Arthur can play in the den. We'll go to the zoo another day. Later, as Jenny finished eating her breakfast, she asked Arthur what they were going to play. I don't know yet, said Arthur, but we'll think of something. Okay, Mommy told them as they headed off for the den. I have some chores to do around the house. I'll come check on you two in a little while. The children didn't know that the special adventure was just about to begin. Arthur looked around at all the toys in the den, thinking about what game they could play. No video games again. Let's do something different, Jenny said. We can play a make-believe game, Arthur offered. That sounds like fun. What are we going to make believe? Jenny asked. As Arthur tried to think of a good make believe game, Jenny found an old play telephone and started playing with the dial. Have you thought of a game yet? She asked him. All of a sudden there was a loud BOOM! Arthur and Jenny looked at one another. Was it thunder? Suddenly there was another boom and the room filled with a white mist. What is that? Jenny asked. Slowly through the haze they saw a figure standing but could not tell who it was. The viper disappeared and standing before them was, believe it or not, a very large orange duck. How amazing! This was no ordinary duck. He stood as tall as Arthur and held in his hand a portable telephone. Who are you? Where did you come from? What do you want? Arthur and Jenny both asked. Why don't you have a seat and I'll answer all your questions, replied the duck. Hello, I'm Sir Engelbert Duck. I come from the famous and magical Royal Engelbert Duck family of London, England. You and Arthur can't go to the zoo today because of the rain. That's why I'm here. I received Jenny's phone call. This Engelbert Duck fellow had a funny accent, so when he spoke, Jenny giggled. The children were still confused, though they didn't understand how Engelbert Duck knew their names or how he knew that they wanted to go to the zoo. Engelbert Duck could tell what the children were thinking. That's the secret to the fame of my family, Engelbert Duck said. Before Arthur could ask his question, I always know whenever or wherever children are feeling blue and need a little fun and excitement to lift up their spirits. The children asked how this could be. I don't really know, replied Engelbert Duck. It's something my family, all the Engelbert Ducks that came before me, have been doing for many, many years. It's just something we're born with. When Jenny began to play with that toy telephone, I received your call and knew that you were looking for something to do. So I got here as fast as I could. Is that a regular phone? Arthur asked. My phone is no ordinary telephone. No, no, not at all, said Engelbert Duck. It's a very special telephone that has been handed down from one generation to another in my family. It is very different from any other telephone. This phone is magical. It has no number, but can be called by children anywhere in the world who are in need of a little fun. Arthur and Jenny did not know what to say. Now, children, let's get ready for the zoo, said Engelbert Duck. But we can't go to the zoo because it's raining, Jenny put in. Oh, but we can go to the zoo today. We're just not going to the zoo here in town, Engelbert Duck replied with a big smile. The children didn't know what to think of this very funny duck. All I have to do is dial the telephone number for the Regent's Park Zoo and off we go, said Engelberg Duck. I've never heard of a Regent's Park Zoo. Where is it? Jenny asked. Why, in London, of course, Engelberg Duck said. Arthur and Jenny just grinned at each other. Engelberg Duck then took a notebook from his pocket. Each of the pages of the notebook was filled with lots of names and numbers. Let's see. Where is that number for the zoo? Engelberg Duck asked himself. Oh yes, here it is. Take hold of my hand and off we'll go, he said. 
Dialing a number on his magical telephone, he took the hands and suddenly a puff of smoke appeared. Looking down at his feet, Arthur realized they no longer touched the floor. They were standing on clouds. Arthur and Ginny were up in the air flying. In just a few seconds, the smoke rolled away and as they let go of each other's hand, they rubbed their eyes. When all the fog cleared, they stood in front of the entrance to a zoo. Arthur read the sign over the gate. It said, Regent's Park Zoo. They were in London, England. All right, children, let's go see the animals, Engelbert Duck said. Arthur and Ginny wanted to see all the animals. Their zoo back home was very small and didn't have a lot of different animals. Engelbert Duck took Arthur and Ginny to look at the lions and tigers and all the big cats. Then they wanted to see the monkeys, the giraffes and the elephants. The children were having lots of fun. I just love looking at all the different animals. I wish I could take them all home as pets, Ginny remarked. I want to show you both a very special animal that you've probably never seen before, except perhaps in a book or a movie, said Engelberg Duck. What is it? the children asked. It's a very special bear that comes from a faraway place, said explained Engelberg Duck. Oh, I bet I know what it is, Arthur answered. I bet it's a panda bear. This excited Jenny. A panda bear? I want to see it. Where is it? she exclaimed. It has a very special home here at the zoo, Engelberg Duck replied. If we walk a little further down this path, we'll arrive at the panda's house. The three of them walked to the panda's house. When they saw the panda bear, amazement overwhelmed the children. In front of them, resting lazily in his cage, lay a real live panda bear. He was a very large and quite furry. Most of his coat was white, but he had spots of black fur on his ears, legs, feet, chest and shoulders. There were also large black patches around his eyes. The panda bear is so cute. I wish I could give it a big hug, said Jenny. Panda bears are very playful, but they're also very strong. If you try to hug him, he might accidentally hurt you, Engelberg Duck told Jenny. Arthur and Jenny watched the panda bear play for quite some time. A zoo worker named Wilson spoke about the cuddly creature. Arthur and Jenny learned about a lot about panda bears. They discovered that this is a kind of bear comes from the forest in China and eats mostly bamboo leaves, which William fed to the giant bear. Zoo worker also told him this animal was very rare. Maybe only a thousand panda bears existed in the whole world. They also found out that when they're full grown, panda bears can get to be five and a half to six feet tall and can weigh 200 pounds. They can also live for 25 years more. Unlike other bears, pandas do not hibernate in the winter. Watching the cute bear eat made the children hungry, so Sir Ingleberg Duck took them to the restaurant for some lunch. They had a delicious meal of soup and sandwiches with chocolate ice cream for dessert. After lunch, they went to see the other animals in the zoo. They saw bears, snakes, and all kinds of birds. Arthur and Ginny couldn't believe all the different types of animals there were in the world. Jenny was very happy, because she really loved watching the animals play. She wished she could stay here forever and watch them. What time is it? asked Arthur. We must have been here for hours. If we don't get home soon, Mommy will be looking for us. Don't worry, Engelberg Duck told him. Part of the magical powers I have allow me to slow down time while these magical adventures. When you get back home, it'll seem like just a short time has gone by. Before they left, Jenny wanted to see the panda bear just one more time. When they returned to the panda bear's house, Ginny stood very close to the fence, watching as the giant animal lay on its back in the warmth of the sun. He rode around for a bit, then continued munching on some bamboo leaves. After a short while, Engelberg Duck asked the children if they were ready for the trip home. All I have to do is dial the number of your play telephone at home, and we'll all be back in your den in no time at all, Engelberg Duck said. Once again, he took out his notebook and looked through all the numbers written in it. As he dialed the number, he told the children to hold hands. Jenny waved goodbye. As she waved, the panda bear turned and looked at her. He moved his arm and it looked as though he was waving back. Jenny just smiled and turned to Arthur. She was ready to go now. Just as before, the puff of smoke appeared all around them and once again, they found themselves flying through the air. 
Before they knew it, they returned safely back home to their den. Anglebird Duck told the children that it was time for him to go, but Jenny asked him to stay and play some more. I'm sorry, Jenny, but I really have to go. There are other children all over the world that also need my attention. It wouldn't be fair for them if I didn't answer their calls, explains Engelberg Duck. We had such a great time today, and we're so happy we made a new friend. We're going to miss you a lot. Will you visit us again? asked Arthur. Oh yes, of course. Indeed, without a doubt, Engelberg assured them. Whenever you need me, you know how to reach me. Just use your play telephone and call me. I'll get here as soon as I can. But I don't remember the number I dialed. I won't be able to reach you, Jenny said sadly. Engelberg Duck walked over and gave her a big hug. All you have to do is pick up your phone and say my name. The magic will do the rest. I promise you I will get your call, he said. Jenny hugged him back. Goodbye, Engelberg Duck. I'll miss you very, very much, she told him. Me too, Arthur added. He also hugged Engelberg Duck goodbye. All right, children, I'm off on another adventure. Always remember that I'm just a call away, Engelberg said. He dialed a number on his magic telephone, and before he had even finished dialing, Engelberg Duck disappeared in a puff of smoke just as quickly as he had arrived. Arthur and Jenny sat down on the couch. They remained silent while thinking of the great adventure they had that day. They would never forget the zoo and all the animals they had seen. The best thing of all was that they had made a very special and a magical new friend, Engelberg Duck. They knew that Engelbert would keep his promise and visit again for more adventure. This made them both feel very happy inside, and very special. The door to the den quietly opened, and their mommy walked in. Is everything okay in here? she asked. You two have been so quiet while you were playing that I almost forgot you were here. I'm sorry about not being able to take you to the zoo. Maybe we can go tomorrow if it doesn't rain. I hope you found something to do, she asked. Arthur and Jean looked at each other with a very large smile spreading across their faces. Not at all, Mommy, they both said together, but we had a lot of fun.